few weeks ago when we did the shop tour on this little shop, you asked what I was going to do about powering lights in this shop. Well, most of the day, if I'm just working in here, I don't have any lights on. But when I'm making videos, I need lights because it gets really shadowy and contrasty in here. So I have to have two or three video lights, and those are all battery-operated lights. Batteries don't last real long, even though I'm running the biggest battery these particular lights will hold. They still seem to run dead way too fast. And since they're fairly expensive, I haven't invested in more batteries. Plug-in power would be nice. So when the folks at Opus reached out to me and said, would you like to try one of our power generators? I thought that might just be the right solution. So today, let's take a look at the Opus, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, Mega 2. The Mega 2 is a 2048 watt hour battery system with a 2500 watt output, continuous output. It'll also do something like 5000 watts of surge power. So this is a pretty powerful system and it should run everything I need to run in this little shop. That's mostly going to be video lights, but it will also give me the ability to charge the batteries for the cordless power tools right here in this shop and not have to run back and forth to charge those. I'll just have to take this over to the main shop and plug it in. I'm guessing once a month is probably all I'm going to have to charge this. This should last quite some time. But it would also allow me to bring corded power tools. If I'm doing some project over here, I need a tool that I don't have in a cordless variety. This would give me the ability to plug that tool in over here. And it may be a great solution for people with off-grid shops. Maybe you've got a shed out in the backyard that doesn't have any power and you have to run an extension cord. This is a lot easier and more efficient than running an extension cord in most cases. Or maybe you're setting up at an event somewhere and power isn't available at the event, or like a lot of the events I've been to, they want to charge you like $200 to bring an extension cord over, and then it's really limited power and you only get about one outlet. This thing has four 15 amp 120 volt plugs on it and one 30 amp 120 volt plug. This is not a 220 plug. So this isn't gonna run the big power hammer, the induction forge or, or anything else that needs 220 power. But it will run most of the common tools you find in a blacksmith shop. I think before we dive into all the specs and everything else on this, we gotta see what kind of tools this will run. So I'm actually gonna take it over to the other shop where all the tools that I can't use over here right now are living and see what it'll run. This is my KMG belt grinder with a two horse motor and a variable frequency drive. This is a one horsepower Baldor buffer. Looks like it runs it just fine. The number in the center is the percentage of charge for the battery unit itself. The number on the far right is the current power draw. The number on the left is how many hours it will run at that power draw. How about a chop saw? runs the 25 pound little giant quite nicely. Should be absolutely no problem at all running the blower on the ribbon burner forge, but we can at least see what kind of power it draws. 112 watt power draw, estimated 12 hours of battery capacity. You can work all day with a ribbon burner forge using this. So my big question at this point is would this thing run this little teeny tiny 110 welder? Power wise it ought to do it. 
still seems like welding off a battery bank shouldn't be possible, but I'm going to try it anyways. So the answer to that question is no. It'll strike an arc, sort of, but it won't run a bead. So I think that Whatever little inverter is in this just doesn't play nicely with the little inverter that's in that. There may be some welders that work with it, but I wouldn't go out and buy something like this just hoping that it would run the welder I had. It's too bad, it would be really handy for that. Of course, I bet it has no problem running portable power tools like an angle grinder. So something like this is going to be really useful in this little shop that doesn't have any electrical power run to it. And I don't plan to run any electrical power to this shop. These are also wonderful for backup in your house if you're worried about power outages or even to take camping. If you take an RV and you don't want to run a noisy generator when there's other campers around, this thing really doesn't make any noise when you're using it. It's got a cooling fan if it needs it. But other than that, it's quiet. It's not at all like a generator. So it's got a lot going for it in that regard. It's not going to run every tool in the shop. It won't run my old Wilton square wheel grinder. We weren't able to weld with it, which would have been nice, but not a deal breaker for me anyways. Of course, it's not going to run the big air hammer, the induction forge, the three-phase bandsaw, any of that kind of stuff. It's just limited to smaller 120 volt tools. And it even has the option of an add-on battery. So you can actually increase the battery capacity of this thing with a plug-in battery. I think it just sits on top or underneath. I'd have to kind of look at that. I'll see if I can find a picture of it on their website. And of course, if we ever have a power outage in the house, you can take this into the house and just set it down next to whatever it is you need to run. Whether that's your refrigerator or a microwave or just lights, or if you need to run the computer and get some work done in the evening, something like that. This has lots of power for doing that kind of stuff. This does come with a charging cable, so you can plug it in either the garage or house, wherever it is you have power access, and then just bring this unit back to wherever you're using it. It has a car charger, it has some DC connects, just various cables, depending on what you're trying to do with it. it has the option of solar panels. They didn't send me any solar panels to try out. But if you're out camping or something, you could charge this with solar panels if you want to invest the extra money. And of course, an owner's manual that I haven't opened. I think this might actually be pronounced Oopus because their slogan is no power oops with Oopus. Oopus focuses on environmental responsibility. Our mission is to provide affordable and portable solar products that empower individuals and communities to embrace clean energy alternatives. Together, we can create a brighter and more sustainable future. We are committed to making a difference. That's why 5% of all sales from our products will go directly to the UPAS Help Project. Let our love reach those in need. The current retail price of this is $1,359 US, and that's less than most of the competitive brands. They provided a chart here so you can kind of see what the relative price is compared to some of the other brands. I don't know how many portable power tool batteries this would replace if you use this instead of buying battery operated tools. But at some point, this might be more affordable. Now the outlets on the front of the, this, I said they were 15 amp. They're 15 amp plugs, but they're actually 20 amp circuits. So you could plug something that is pushing that 15 amp limit. And certainly if you're running more than one thing at a time, you're less likely to trip the breaker that way. But there's a total of 15 different power outlets on here between the 120 volt outlets, the 30 amp 120 volt outlet. There's a regular cigarette lighter plug, so it's if you got something that you run in your car, you can plug that into this. There are Anderson connectors if you're using that kind of power source. There's USB A, USB C. So lots of options for this if you need to power portable devices, charge cameras. The operating and storage temperature is zero degrees Fahrenheit to 104 degrees Fahrenheit. It was 12 degrees here last night. This was actually in the shop here all night and it was pretty darn cold. I actually had frost on it when I got up here this morning and it's been running just fine. So that much cold didn't hurt it any. But if it's gonna get below zero, I'll make sure I take it back to the house. The estimated longevity or battery life on this is 3,500 cycles to 80% discharge. So that's a lot of cycles and most of the time you're not gonna be cycling it that deep. I think it's gonna take me probably 
a month of using this the way I plan to use it before I ever even need to charge it. I think it's got plenty of power for that kind of stuff. So thank you, Upus, for sending out the Mega 2 power station. This is going to come in real handy. I also appreciate that they want to support the videos that I'm making both here on Black Bear Forge 2 and on the main channel of Black Bear Forge. Sponsor support really does help make a difference. I realize this has been a little bit different video, not a lot of forging, but sometimes how you get power to your shop is an important part of being able to blacksmith, so I think it's an important subject to cover. If you enjoyed the video, I'd love it if you hit that like button. If you haven't done so already, think about hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell so you know when I make new videos over here on Black Bear Forge 2. In the meantime, I hope you have time in your day to get out to your shop. Make something, but stay safe. Wear your safety glasses. We'll see you for the next video.